Hey guys, welcome to BMW Blog and welcome to Salzburg. We're here today in this very obscure room and there is a reason for that because BMW is doing a close room on the new M5 Touring. So the car is finally here. We've been talking about this for years and we finally have a chance to see this car. And it's exciting because it's coming to the US and that's been great news for the BMW fans because they've been asking for an M3 Touring for quite some time, but instead we're getting this car. So let's focus on this one before we hop into the other room to see the new M5 sedan. As you'd expect, it's based on the BMW 5 Series Touring, and that's a car, of course, that we're not gonna get in the US, but we are getting this M5 Touring. So design-wise, of course, it will mimic that particular car, and there are also some other design details. They're similar to the M5 sedan. So if you look at the back, of course, you have the typical proportion of a wagon of a Touring. Actually, officially, it's gonna be called the M5 Touring, it's not gonna be called an M5 wagon in the US, so that's cool because Turing sounds a lot better, honestly. If you look at the design from the back, of course, the taillights, identical to the 5 Series Turing, so no surprise there. You're not getting any laser lights or any tricks in there. The only difference here, you're getting this shadow line inside, which you will notice it's different than on the 5 Series or on the i5 Turing. From the back, of course, it's your typical M design, so really broad shoulders, fairly clean lines, but of course you have this monster of a diffuser. It's not in carbon fiber. That's not an option. And the M5 Touring, we're going to talk about the sedan in a second and all these options. 100 millimeters quad pipes, of course, you expect to see that on the M products. And then as you see, they're kind of pushed in a little bit more than you see in other M cars. And that's quite unique on the car. Of course, you got this massive lines right here, which give the car a really nice stance from the back. I've seen the car in a camouflage uh, of prototype and it looked massive, massive from the rear. A few new things, of course, you have a new M5 logo, something that we expected to see to make it a little bit more special, but unfortunately, you're not getting the split tailgate and that's to be expected because the 5 Series and the i5 Touring do not have it. Another thing that doesn't get, it's the carbon fiber roof, which is available only on the sedan. So you're getting this see-through, kind of like a moon roof, which doesn't really open. And uh, that's the only option that you have on the M5 Touring. Let's look at the space. Space-wise, 500 liters compared to the 466 on the M5 sedan. Other than that, your typical space that you expect to see in the car. It's not electric, so it's always tricky, but you get the idea. There is a little bit of a storage room right here. Not much because you have the battery pack in there. So of course, you're not gonna get additional room here. You can store maybe just a few things in here. Speaking of the battery pack, let's talk about that briefly before we talk about some other things. So you have 18.6 kilowatts hours, which gives you a range of about 67 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. So that's quite important because the EPA rating is not out yet, and that's gonna be a little bit different. Let's talk about charging. So you can see you have this European port. Of course, you're getting a different one in the US. It still doesn't have the Tesla port. That's gonna come in the future in other BMWs. You might be wondering about the charging speed. So 11 kilowatts, and that will take you from zero to 100% state of charge in about two hours. Of course, it's different than on the M5 sedan, as we've seen in that video. That one does 7.4 kilowatts initially. It will get an 11 kilowatts in the future. But for now, that car charges from zero to 100% in about three hours. Size-wise, it's identical to the M5 sedan. The only difference that you're getting about six millimeters in height, so you're gaining about six millimeters there. But other than that, it's quite, quite similar. Wheels, as you see right here, brand new design by color. What you get right here are the compound brakes. Those are standard on the car. Of course, you can option the car with carbon ceramics. They come available in black, I believe, red and blue calipers if you wanna change that. 20 at the front, 21 inches in the back. They're a little bit wider than you get on the 5 Series Touring or on the i5 Touring as well. You can see really clean shapes you have. The flush door handle, something that we expect to see in all the new BMWs. You have the typical BMW character line that runs all the way in the back. And the idea is to separate the volume of the car to make it look a little bit shorter than it actually is. If you open the door, you can see a really large door opening. So that's gonna make getting in and out of the car quite, quite nicely. We're gonna hop inside and take a look at that as well. Of course, you have your typical Touring shape, and this is also unique on the car compared to the 5 Series Touring. Of course, it helps with downforce, but it also looks quite cool, especially with the air opening in the center. 
clearly, you know, if you put a car side by side, the sedan and the Touring, the only difference will be really from this side up. So that's going to be completely different. Other than that, the cars really look identical. And mirror caps, of course, you expect to see that on M cars. This one, it's not in carbon fiber. And it's interesting because the only option that you can get on this car as far as carbon fiber, it are really the mirror caps. You cannot spec this car with a carbon fiber package as you will see on the M5 sedan. We talked about charging. Of course, you have the charging port right here. This is the European standard, but of course, the US one will look completely different. You're still not getting the Tesla standard, as we call it. So that's probably coming to other BMWs in the future. If we move to the front, Identical to the M5 sedan, so really no difference there. You're not getting any laser lights. You're getting LEDs. Of course, you have the same shape as on the 5 Series, so really no surprise because you have the blue LED accents, which always look really, really cool. But honestly, that's the only option you get on the car. Of course, front end, quite aggressive, a lot of shapes. Uh, we've seen the spy photos. We've seen the photoshops and all of that. So really no surprise. It's kind of what I expected. You have kind of this Frankenstein design a little bit at the front because you have shapes running across everywhere. But what's nice about this car, you really have these really large air intakes, air openings, which give the car a very, very bold look. Of course, illuminated kidney grills. So that's something that you get on both cars, the M5, Touring and the sedan. New logo as well on the car. How about we open up the hood right now and talk about the specs of the engine? All right, so of course, you're getting a plug-in hybrid drivetrain, and that starts with the S68 engine. Of course, it's a similar drivetrain as we've seen in the uh, BMW XM. There are a few differences there that we're gonna talk about it when we do the video review of the car. But overall, you're getting 727 PS, which is probably about 717 horsepower or something like that. A thousand newton meter of torque, so I expect this car to be quite, quite fast from zero to 60. I'm assuming in the low three seconds, which makes it really, really fun to drive. Of course, there are a bunch of additions to the chassis here to keep everything tight so you have strut right here and a brace you got a couple of braces in there and of course underneath as well and that's supposed to make the front end bite a little bit more on the track if you want to drive just on gasoline you're getting about 585 horsepower from the engine of course the electric motor produces about 195 but you cannot combine the two because there is a different power distribution and depending on the mode hybrid and all of that but we'll go into a lot more details in the future on that essentially the number you need to remember it's seven 27 PS and a thousand newton meters of torque and that's probably quite impressive to drive. The car it's a little bit heavy it's about 2475 kilograms and it's about 40 kilos heavier than the BMW M5 sedan. All right so inside the car there are a few changes compared to the 5 series touring and uh, of course you expect that because this is an M car so you will see a lot of M badges all around. You have one right here on the iDrive controller but the one thing you'll notice also immediately is the fact that it doesn't have a shifter anymore. I kind of expected this. It's kind of weird not seeing this in a BMW M car, but you can still shift the gears from here if you want to with this little toggle right there. There is a start and stop button in the red to make things a little bit more cooler inside. Of course, M1 and M2 buttons in red as well. I think there's like a matte red, which looks really cool. Of course, you got the paddle shifters in carbon fiber too. Also new is this interaction bar that runs across from the doors all the way into the center console and all the way on this side. It's a functional one. It can display the hazard lights if you want to. It can take phone calls and it's gonna blink for you to grab your attention. I drive 8.5, of course, it's easy to recognize that because if you turn on the AC, you will see this new climate control. So I'm happy to see this in the car. But then of course, it's got the M softer stack on it and it will look completely different from the regular BMW series car. Steering wheel, same beefy steering wheel. It's got a flat bottom, so that's gonna make things easy to get in and out of the car. So that's a functional piece that I've noticed recently in BMWs. 12 o'clock red marker, of course, to go with the overall theme inside the car. Seats, brand new seat design. Of course, you're not getting the carbon biking seats in this one. I'm assuming BMW wants to keep those for maybe a CS version in the future. I'm not sure, that's just my speculation, but there is a brand new design, different color combination. This is the Kilami orange with black. I've seen a red and black one as well in the M5 sedan. It looks fantastic. While the charging, of course, there are plenty of USB ports, plenty of storage. You have here the haptic buttons to change the hybrid mode and the different mode and set up the car and all of that. As I mentioned, you're not getting the carbon roof. So of course this one retracts and you have this really large panoramic roof. So you're getting a lot of light inside. I kind of wish you had a carbon fiber roof because it's an M car. So it would be nice to have that option, but you don't have it. Bowers and Wilkins are standard in the car, 19 speakers. So that's the only option that you have, which is great because you're paying a lot of money for the car. And let's talk about that. In the US, 
The M5 Touring is priced around 121, 900 something, so almost 122 thousand dollars compared to 119 thousand dollars for the M5 sedan. So only about two thousand dollar difference for this car because you're getting more utility, more space, and all of that in the rear. And I set up the seats to my driving position, as you can see plenty of leg room. I'm quite tall, 6 to 1.9 meters tall. What I like about the seats also, they have these nice scoops in here. So from a design perspective, it's gonna give you some additional knee room if needed. Of course, headroom, plenty. I mean, I'm talking here at least six, seven centimeters, which is amazing. As you can see, the rear bench, it's also angled a little bit. And the idea here is really to give you more headroom. Plenty of side room, as you can see. I mean, I'm gonna close the door. Plenty of elbow room. You can easily fit three people here, even for longer distances. It's a quite, quite spacious car, just like the 5 Series Touring. As far as amenities, of course, you have a lot of USB-C ports. One here, one there, of course, a couple here. You can adjust the AC controls, so really no surprise there. You're not getting any carbon bucket seats, as I mentioned. So, of course, you're always going to get this plastic in the back. Apparently, it's not customizable, but you can customize, actually, the leather in the car in different colors. I don't recall all of them orange and black, red and black, and there was one more combination, I think blue and silver stone, or something like that, which is something that you expect to see from BMW M. We've got these M badges engraved in here. Of course, there is, you know, this black piano plastic. Sometimes it's annoying because uh, it just leaves a lot of smudges, but yeah, we got used to that. Of course, you have the M seat belts with the stripes, a nice touch as always. And other than that, really, really quite spacious car. I'm going to say it one more time. It is my favorite when it comes to the 2 M5, just because of the practicality. I've always loved wagons, tourings. Every time I come to Europe, I try to get one to drive. Anyway, let's hop outside. Let's wrap it up. So I know I've been rushing quite a bit throughout this video because I have to do a lot of driving around here with the M5s and M4CS and see some other cars. But let me wrap it up quickly. So. This is the BMW M5 Touring. It's coming to the US. Production starts later this year. We might see this car maybe towards the end of the year in the US or early next year. It's always this thing with shipping and production and everything else. You might be wondering about pricing. So let's talk about US first. About $122,000 without tax. But if you want to buy one in Europe, that's going to cost you about 146,000 euros. But that includes VAT. And that's the tax here in Europe. Of course, it's not limited in numbers. So you can order as many as you want to. And I encourage you to do so because the BMW community and the fans and the cars have been asking for a Touring for such a long time. Of course, we didn't get the M3 Touring, which I wish we did, but we're getting this car. So if we're not buying this car, I don't think we're ever going to see another Touring in the US. This is a true test to see if that car really sells in America. So I'm hoping that everyone on Instagram and on social media everywhere, they've been commenting about bringing the Touring, bringing the Touring. Well, you got a Touring. It's not priced crazily. People thought it's going to be $150,000. It's not. So fairly priced, okay, compared to the market. So let's see how it goes. Color-wise, Isle of Man green, standard color. You're getting fire red in Europe. It's called Vegas red in the US. That's a, another complicated story there. Uh, Brooklyn gray, black sapphire, Alpine white. And then, of course, you have about 150 colors that you can pick from BMW individual. I don't know the price, but in the past, I think it was in between three and five thousand dollars in the US based on the color, probably a bit more in Europe. We'll have a chance to drive the car in the fall. Of course, the unveil will be by the time you're watching this video, it's August already, and you're going to see this car in Pebble Beach. So that's a world premiere for the US. And it's cool that BMW brings this car to Pebble Beach because it's such an iconic event where you see some really cool cars and this car would perfectly fit there. So quite, quite happy with that decision from BMW. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. This is probably my favorite car today. So if I have a choice to get one in my garage, I might go for the M5 Touring. See you in the next one. All right, so here is the infamous BMW block cargo test. You've seen it before, but here is on the M5 Touring. Once again, 500 liters of cargo space in this one compared to 466 on the M5 sedan. There is a little bit less room than you'd expect, mostly because of the battery pack, the seats underneath here, but it's still quite, quite spacious. And that's one of the reasons why I really like the Touring is because you're getting this practicality and daily driving capabilities of a fun car as a family car as well, but if you want to go to the track, you can take this car to the track as well. So if I had a choice in the future between this and the sedan, this would be the one.